Learning from death. Many people may not want to directly face death or think about death. I talked in another YouTube video about thinking about death, but this is about learning from death. It's the man named Suzuki Shozo, a Zen master, who mentioned this, and I thought, that's pretty good. When we talk about Zen, many people may not relate to what it is, but it's pretty much about facing whatever comes on our way the best we can without being caught up. So you flow, liberated, and you're okay under whatever the circumstance. That's unbelievable if you think about it. And that's what I thought when I studied Zen at the beginning. The guy also named Suzuki, Daisetsu Suzuki, mentioned that the happiness in Zen is like you are happy no matter what condition you face. It's not easy. This morning I was thinking about the 47 samurais who killed or cut, you know, they call seppuku, you know, killed in front of the, the shogun, basically, after they were blamed that they did something wrong. In Japan, this is a very s famous story, Akoroshi, and there's a temple and when you go there, there's always that incense. It's like a cloud, lots of smokes all the time. I was amazed. And as Japanese, I can relate to it. You know, this is something happened 300 years ago, probably 200, I don't know exactly. But the man was put into death because the government or the shogun thought he did something wrong. And for that, 47 samurais was upset about it and wanted to do something about it. And what they have done, whatever that was, was considered bad. So the 47 of them had to cut their belly, all of them. And that's the temple where there's a tombs are. And the story 99% of Japanese may know. If you imagine those days when people in Edo, right now it's called Tokyo, knew about this. And probably they talked a lot. I think about the current situation somehow. In the whole world, we are talking about coronavirus, COVID-19. It's also about death, how to deal with the situation inevitable in a truthful manner. And there are lots of good and bad can happen along with it. So that tells us who we are. There are so many different kinds of people reacting differently, and I'm one of them. And if you listen to this, <laughs> Um, I don't know what you think about it, either, because I may be seen as stupid, crazy, to say something about it. But I guess the bottom line of this talk is about learning from death, and as we face death, I think we want to live the best we can. If we don't face death and avoid it, well, we cannot avoid it. Eventually, it will catch up with you. So I'm 72 almost, and <laughs> it's catching up with me. <laughs> I may have five years, if I'm lucky, or maybe a little longer, to live. In fact, I have a friend, very good friend, who passed away at age 52, I think, and the other one passed before age 60. And they are good friends of mine, 
and I can picture how I may have felt if I were in their situation. But no matter what, we go through that. And as you get older, it becomes more imminent. If you are far away at the young age, there are so many other things that may occupy your mind. But eventually you get there. And being with it, to start with, always close to death, to me, is make us to be humble, accepting what's inevitable, and that may bring out something wonderful out of us, instead of becoming crazy if we can go through it. Then we, it may establish us to do our best, to live better, healthy, do the right thing, to live a life. Funny thing I also think about is there's a term in Zen which says life and death is one. Our mind says it's different. You know, life and death is 100% opposite. But in this case, it says it's the same. If I try to explain, well, you may have to get the point on your, by yourself. But if I try it, it's like, Nothingness. No matter what happens, everything changes, it goes back to where it is. So from that point of view, if we can have that, everything is impermanent. And there's something to know that it's impermanent. And if you know that something, to look at our life as something that is based on almost like a dream on top of this absolute truth of what is happening, then we can relate to being that dead to know being alive or being alive and related to that, be dying. Therefore, you may appreciate what you've got, do the best you can, not cause trouble to others and to ourselves, including any suffering. Okay, the talk is cheap, practice is the question. So when I heard about this term, learning from death, I like that. Many masters, in my view, have gone through all the very, very difficult situation to break through, come up with an insight. One of the most difficult one may be death, to come out of the insight if we can. From here on, I may be facing more about this death situation as I live and confirming myself to do my best, live my best and help others and bring up the peace and harmony. Thank you.